Hello and welcome to our lesson on writing equations of lines, or we could also say we are writing linear functions. Um, in general, linear equations or linear functions are written in one of two forms. We generally write them in, that is my highlighter, in our slope intercept form, which is our y equals mx plus b, or in our point slope form, which is our y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 form. Um, these forms could be converted if necessary to the third form that we see, which is standard. So we could, if we needed to, take one of those and have it converted to our standard, which is the ax plus by equals c. Um, in any situation, when you're writing the equation for a line or the equation for a linear function, the slope is something that you just have to have. And remember we talked about a formula for calculating slope. We said it's the change in y values or the rise in the change in x values um, or the run. Um, and so the fraction of y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1 could be used to find that rise and run. Okay, so we have these three forms. Again, slope intercept, point slope, standard. Generally we're going to be writing in one of these two forms and then if necessary we would convert to the third form. And um, if it's not specified in a problem which form to write an equation in, the slope intercept form is the default form. So this is the default or the default. If it doesn't say what form to write it in, that's generally what we're trying to, to go for. Okay? So when you're writing a linear function, it's going to depend on what information you're given. So for example, in the first problem, we're going to write a linear function given that m is 3 and that b is 4. Well, if we're given m and b, it would make sense to use our y equals mx plus b form. So I'm going to get my pen together here. I'm going to use y equals mx plus b form. Since I know that m is 3, then 3 is going to get plugged in there for m. And since I know that b is 4, then 4 is going to get plugged in there for b. So my equation is going to be y equals 3x plus 4. So my linear equation, my linear function is y equals 3x plus 4. Okay? It's not so bad. Now it looks a little different in the next example, but remember b is our y-intercept. And a y-intercept is a point on our graph where the x value is equal to zero, where we cross the y-axis. And so it's given to me a little different in number two, but that's the same thing there. If x is zero, this means we have our y-intercept at two. So again, I'm going to use y equals mx plus b form here. And m is going to get plugged in right there in front of the x. And then two is going to get plugged in right there for b. So y is going to equal one half x plus two. So that's my linear function that has a slope of one half and a y intercept at two. Okay? Now, if you look at the next form, we have the slope, but the point that we are given is not the y-intercept. It's not where we cross the y-axis. So if we are given the slope and then just a random point that is not our y-intercept, or if we're given a point and the slope, then we will use our point-slope form. So point-slope form says y minus y1 is going to equal m times x minus x1 where x1 and y1 represent the x and the y that are in the point that you're given, and then obviously m is m. So what we're going to be plugging in here is 3 for m, that's not bad, and then we're going to plug in 2, or the 1 is our y1, so that's going to go there, and the 2 is our x1, and so that's going to go there. So when I write my point slope form, it's going to be y stays in the equation, so y, and then it's minus y1. So if I plug in the 1 for the y, then it's y minus y1, y minus 1, and then I have my equal sign, and then in place of the m, we said we're going to put 3, so 3 is going to go there, and then I have a parenthesis, and I have an x, so it's going to be parenthesis and then x, and then it's minus x1, for which we're going to plug in the 2 is going to go there. So it's going to be a minus 2, and that would be our point-slope form. Now, if you were asked for the equation in point-slope form, you can leave it in that form. We generally don't leave equations in that form. We generally simplify them to the default, which is 
slope intercept form. So if we clean this up, we are looking at y minus 1 equal to, we can distribute here and make this 3x and then minus 6. And then to get our slope intercept form, we want y to be by itself. So if we add 1 to both sides, then y is all by itself equal to 3x and then negative 6 and positive 1 makes negative 5. And so that would be our equation in slope intercept form. Starting with point slope because that was the information that we were given. Okay, the next one's going to work the same way. If you notice what we're given, it is the slope and then not the y-intercept, just a random point on the graph. So again, I'm going to use my point slope. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Where we have m, we have x1, and we have y1. So m is going to get plugged in, 1 half is going to get plugged in there. y1 is going to go there. x1 is going to go there. So I'm looking at y minus y1. Now we got to be careful with the signs here. It's a minus in the formula, right? It's a minus in the formula and it's a minus 3 that we're plugging in for y1. So minus a negative 3 means really we're going to have a plus 3 here equal to m. We're plugging in that 1 half and then parentheses x and then it's minus x1, and x1 is 4, so it's going to be minus 4 at that end spot. And again, if it was asked for in point slope form, you would leave it there, but generally we don't do that. We simplify this down, so if we distribute, 1 half times x is 1 half x, and then half of negative 4 is going to be negative 2, and now I can subtract over the 3, and say that my linear function is y equals 1 half x and then minus 2 and minus 3 makes minus 5. So that is the equation of the line that has a slope of 1 half and passes through the point at 4, negative 3. Alright, so I've gone through a couple of examples. I think this would be a good place for you to try this out. So if you're feeling confident, I would say pause the video and give this a try. Otherwise, you can listen to me do this again. So we have a, a slope and we have a point. So not an, a y-intercept, right? The y-intercept would be here. This is actually the x-intercept. Not so helpful in our form. So again, let's use our point-slope form y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, where this is x1 and this is y1. So we're going to plug in negative 3 fifths for m, 0 for y, and negative 5 for x1. So we are looking at y minus y1 is 0 equal to m, which is negative 3 fifths, and then it's x minus x1. So minus a negative 5, again, that's going to make a positive 5 in our uh, point slope form. So plus 5 goes here, and now we can simplify. Well, y minus 0 is just y, and if we distribute here, we have a negative 3 fifths x, and then a negative times a positive makes a negative, and remember this is 5 over 1, so we're going to end up with 15 over 5, which is just going to be 3, so minus 3. And that looks really silly there. So that is, oops, chose the high there. That is the equation. That is a linear function that has a slope of negative 3 fifths and passes through a point at negative 5, 0. Okay? So if you're given m and b, plug into m and b. If you're given m and a random point, then plug into point slope, right? If it's slope and a point, plug into a point slope. Sometimes you are given two points. So whether we want to plug into mx plus b, or plug into point slope. Again, the slope is necessary. So if you're given two points and asked to write your linear function, you're going to have to start by finding the slope. So here's your x1, y1, x2, y2. So we're going to find the slope. And the slope is, again, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So in this case, um, it's going to be 9 minus 1 on the top of the fraction, right? y2 minus y1. And then x2 minus x1 is going to be 5 minus 3 on the bottom. And so we're looking at 8 divided by 2, which is 4. 
So I have a slope of 4, and now I have two points to choose from to write my point slope. So it doesn't matter which point we use, but because the formula calls for x1, y1, I typically just use the first point. So using our point slope, y minus y1 equal to, let me change colors, got a lot of blue going on here, y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1. So the slope of 4 is going to get plugged in here, and x1, which is 3, is going to go here for x1, and y1, which is 1, is going to go right here for y1. So when I rewrite this, and actually, I'm going to go here. When I rewrite this, it's going to be y minus 1 equals 4 times x minus 3, and then we're going to simplify this down. So y minus 1 equals 4x minus 12, and if I add the 1 to both sides, then I can see y equals 4x minus 11 is the equation for my linear function. Okay, so we got to find the slope, use your point and slope and the point slope form, and then we simplify down to slope intercept form. And let's try that again. Okay, sometimes the slopes don't work out to be such nice numbers. Let's see what happens here. This is x1, y1, x2, y2. So our slope is going to be y2 minus y1, that's negative 1 minus 7, over x2 minus x1. So 4 minus a negative 2 becomes a plus 2. And so that's negative 8 on the top of the fraction and 6 on the bottom, which is a negative 4 thirds when we reduce. So I'm going to use negative 4 thirds on my first point and plug into y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Or again, uh, m, negative 4 thirds, is going to go right there. And x1, x1 is negative 2, that's going to go right there. And x, or sorry, y1, y1 is 7, and that's going to go right there. So when I rewrite this, it's going to be y minus 7 equals a negative 4 thirds times x, and it's minus x1, so minus a negative 2 becomes a plus 2. And now when I simplify, y minus 7 is going to equal negative 4 thirds x, and then here, not so pretty, um, is going to be a negative 8 thirds. And again, not so nice in the next step, when I have to get y by itself, I've got to add 7 to both sides to make that cancel. So y is going to equal a negative 4 thirds x, and then I have to add 7 to negative 8 thirds. So a negative 8 thirds plus 7 over 1. We need a common denominator to do this, so I would multiply my second fraction by 3 over 3, which means I'm really trying to put together negative 8 thirds and 21 thirds, and then 21 minus the 8 is going to be 13, so it's going to be 13 thirds there, if you want to do the work by hand. Otherwise, just go into your calculator and say, hey, what's negative 8 thirds, and then plus 7, and hit your fraction to decimal button in the blue there, and it will give you the same 13 thirds. So by all means, use your technology. And there it is. So not so pretty, but definitely still a linear functions. Okay? Now, in that particular case, um, or in any case really, if you are asked to write your equation in standard form, you won't write an equation in standard form. You will never just write it in standard form. You will either write it in slope-intercept form and convert it, or you will write it in point-slope form, get it to slope-intercept form, and then convert it. So we're going to take uh, the answer that we just got in problem 6, and we're going to convert it to slope intercept, or to standard form. So I'm going to take y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 13 thirds, and I'm going to make it standard form. So standard form is where we have ax plus by 
equal to c. So that means we want the x and the y on the same side of the equation, and what we want are for a, b, and c to be integers. So a, b, c are integers. That means we don't want any fractions or decimals in our standard form. So I would start this by adding the 4 thirds to the other side. I'm going to add 4 thirds x to the other side. So what I'm looking at is y, sorry, uh, 4 thirds x can't really be added to y. So it's going to be 4 thirds x plus a y on this side, and then I have 13 thirds still on the other side. So now it's in order, right? I've got the x term, I've got the y term, and I have the constant. But in standard form, again, we want none of those fractions. So we want to clear the fractions out, and we can clear fractions by multiplying each one of our terms by, I would say, the common denominator, but in this case, there's only one denominator, and that's 3. If I multiply this entire equation by 3, which is 3 over 1, what happens when I multiply here is I get 12 over 3, which is just going to be 4. So that's a 4 in front of the x. And then when I multiply here, 3 times y is just going to be 3y. And then I have an equal sign. And when I multiply here, again, the 3 and the 3 are going to cancel there. Or you can look at that as 39 on the top, 3 on the bottom. But that's going to make 13. And so our equation in standard form, looks a little cleaner, doesn't have all those ugly fractions in it, okay? So for standard form, you want x, y, number, right? Your x term, your y term on the same side of the equation, and then your constant, the one that doesn't have a variable on the other side, and we want for those coefficients in that constant to be integers, so no fractions or decimals. So it's a matter of rearranging the terms and then clearing out the fractions if there are fractions. Okay, and you won't be asked to do a ton of that, but again, if you're asked for an equation in standard form, you would write one of the other forms and then convert. All right, so now I have one here, again, for, to try. You don't need to write this in standard form. It, it doesn't specify, so the default is slope-intercept. So see if you can't use those two points and come up with the equation in slope-intercept form, if you're feeling good about this, okay? I'm going to start this. So slope, here's our x1, y1. Here's our x2, y2. It's going to be y2 minus y1 in the numerator, and then x2 minus x1 in the denominator. So 5 minus 1 is 4. 0 minus 4 is negative 4, which means our slope is going to be a negative 1. Now this one, we don't have to go to point slope form because this point at 0, 5 is the y-intercept. It tells me that b is 5. So if I have m and I have b, then I know y is going to equal mx plus b. I, I can use my mx plus b form. So negative 1 goes in for m, and then 5 goes in for b. And if you don't want to write the negative 1, you don't have to. You can also just say negative x plus 5. Either one of those would be perfectly acceptable. Okay. Now if you did point slope form, um, it would be totally fine. It's when you simplify it down, you should get to the same answer. It's just if we can skip some of that work, it's going to be helpful, right? To work smarter, not harder sometimes. All right, two more examples. Put some words in here. Hopefully you're not freaked out by that concept. Um, it says in problem number eight here that in one day, a waiter is paid $25 plus $15 per hour that he works. Write a linear function to represent his daily earnings. Now remember what a linear function is. Linear function, in general, our default is our y equals mx plus b. Or m, what we've been calling slope, remember is, is how we move from one point to the next, which is the rate of change in y values with respect to x values. So m is the rate of change. So in a word problem, we're looking for a rate that is changing, like the $15 per hour. That's a changing amount. Every hour it's increasing by $15, his, his um, daily earnings. So the rate of change in this case, or m in this case, is going to be related to that 15. And then b, remember what b represents. 
So B is a y-intercept, but that's where the graph begins on the y-axis, and that's where in a real-life situation our points would begin as well. So we're going to call B the starting point. This is on a graph, it's the starting point on the y-axis, but in a real situation you can't have any negatives, and so it's going to be the starting point for your real situation. So it's going to be the starting point. And where's the starting point for his earnings, which is what we're trying to write a function for? The starting point for his earnings is he's paid 25 bucks. So that's our starting point, okay? So what we are given in this situation is that M is $15 per hour. That's the rate of change in earnings per hour. And we know that the starting point B is he's paid 25 bucks to start. Okay, so if we know M and B, then our function for this situation is going to be Y equals 15X plus 25. Where in this particular case, what does X represent and what does Y represent? Well, Y represents the daily earnings and 15 represents the number of hours. So he makes $15 per hour plus the $25 he started with to make a total amount of earnings for his day. Okay, so if you wanted to change the variables out and say his earnings are $15 per hour plus the initial $25 that they pay him, that would be a reasonable thing to do as well. Okay, so you could use different variables to accommodate your situation, that's totally fine. Um, let's try this again. So a dentist opens at, <clears throat> excuse me, at 8 a.m. and by noon he has seen 12 patients. So write a linear function to represent the number of patients that he has seen per hour. So the rate of change in this one we actually have to figure out. The patients seen per hour, that is the rate of change here. Pen, come on. Rate of change here is patients per hour. Okay, how many patients is he seeing per hour? So that's our rate of change in this one. Patients per hour. Okay, and so what we know is he's seen from 8 a.m. to noon, he's seen 12 patients. So 8 a.m. to noon, so that's 8 a.m. it starts and then 9 a.m. would be an hour. Let me write out what I'm saying here. He starts at 8, and then he goes to 9, and he goes to 10, and then he goes to 11, and then at noon. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4 hours. So in a time span of 4 hours, he has seen 12 patients. So if he saw 12 patients in 4 hours, then that would be 3 patients per hour. Okay, so remember the 12 patients per hour, that's a rate. We want the unit rate, the average rate over those um, four hours total. Now that doesn't mean he, he saw three patients per hour, right? It could have been that he saw four patients and then three patients and then five patients, but it averages out to three patients per hour. And that's our rate of change. So now we know M but we don't know B, or do we? So the starting, am I on blue? Yes. The starting point is the starting number of patients. And what's the original number of patients? The original number, I need to fix this, hang on. I can't fit all this writing at the bottom of my page. That's there we go. Original number of patients. What is the original number of patients? When he opens up, this dentist opens at 8 a.m. Right on the dot. Has he seen anybody? Nope. The starting number of patients is zero. Starts out at zero patients and then over the course of four hours he sees 12. And so what is our equation here? We're gonna say um, that y is going to equal mx plus b, in this case uh, 3x plus 
0. So just y equals 3x, where x is the number of hours, x is the number of hours, and then y is the number of patients. So four hours, if we plugged in there, we would see 12 patients total. And again, if you wanted to use different variables, you could say the number of patients is three per hour. So, you know, sometimes using the other variables actually makes this make more sense. It's just if you're going to end up graphing it, we stick to x's and y's because our axes are in terms of x and y. But really any variables that you're using um, are going to be okay. That's the beauty of variables. They can, they can kind of be whatever we want. Okay? So if uh, those word problems are a little complicated for you, don't stress too much. That's just supposed to be sort of an introduction to that concept. Um, as long as you can write the linear functions that we were dealing with before here, I think you should be okay. Um, hopefully you've got enough to get going on your practice, but as always, if you need some extra help, then just reach out. All right, guys, take care.